Now that we have done the initial setup, let's create our main character. Click OK to exit the database if you're still in it. Now click the icon for Character Generator. The first thing to note is that the Character Generator has three pages. The first page, which we are looking at now, is for creating a male character. The second page is for creating a female character. And the third page is for creating a kid character. At this time, kid only has options for a girl character. Let's familiarize ourselves with the Character Generator window as we create a male character. To the left is the Parts list. This is where we can choose which part of the character to edit, such as face, hair, eyes, and so forth. Below the Parts list is the Randomize button. Clicking this will randomly select an option from each of the editable parts and the colors associated with them. While you can edit each part manually, which you may want to do for your main character and supporting characters who will be joining the player party through the course of your game, the randomize button makes for a nice little grab bag for throwaway or minor characters. The four buttons below the randomize button are used to export the edited results when you are satisfied. We will cover these in more detail when we get to that point. The Load and Save Settings buttons are used to store and recover the current settings in the character editing process. This is useful if you are satisfied with some parts of the character but need to tweak the others, or if while randomizing, you end up with interesting results you think you might use later. This one seems interesting, but what is his backstory? The gold rim collar gives him the look of nobility, and the long hair gives an air of importance. But who is he? Why does he look so sad, like the weight of the world is on his shoulders? A good story is not just about events or places. It's about with people. Let's begin telling this character's story, in which those questions might be answered. To round out the explanation of the character generator window, variation is where we can choose from the different variants of the selected item in the parts list. Color allows us to independently set desired colors for each part and Preview is where we get to see all of the graphical elements associated with the character. Before going any further, let's save the settings. I'm naming the character Shore, and so the file name ends up being Shore.json. For those who do not know, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation and is a text file format that makes sharing JavaScript resources easy across a variety of platforms and programming languages. RPG Maker MV makes use of this format a lot, so it doesn't hurt knowing what it is at its most basic level. I would like to encourage you to play around with variations and colors for the different parts to try to get close to the character shown here. It doesn't have to match perfectly though, but if you want an exact match, you can download the settings file at grebjack.com slash rpgmakermv slash resources slash lmag.zip. This file will be updated to include character settings, project notes, and other custom content I may create, so it is possible for us to stay on the same page, especially with things like character design where results may differ from person to person. Click on Face Image. A new window containing only Shore's face opens. If you click somewhere in the empty area, the current face image from the character generator will snap there. That's because the face image sheet can hold up to eight different faces. When we start doing dialogue, we will see one of the best uses for this feature. But for now, we'll just go with the one face. Click Export. We'll name it Shore and then save it. We can now close the face image window. Next, click on Walk Character. This opens up the Walk Character window, which works just like the face image window. It too can store up to eight Walk Character tile sets. Click Export. Name the file W-Shore. The reason for this is that both Walk Character and Damage Character export to the same folder. The W- makes it easy to tell at a glance that this is the Walk Character tile sheet for sure. Click Save. Now go ahead and close the Walk Character window. Now click on Damage Character to bring up the Damage Character window. A Damage Character tile sheet can store up to 32 Damage Character tile sets. Click Export. Name this file D-Shore to indicate that this is the Damage Character tile sheet for sure. Save the file and close the Damage Character window.
finally, click on Battler to bring up the Battler window. Unlike the other three tile sheet types, Battler only stores one tile set. Click on Export. Battler tile sheets are exported to their own directory, so we can just name this one Shore. Save the file and then close the Battler window. We can now close the character generator. We're done with it for the time being. This concludes lesson two. In the next lesson, we will learn how to assign a class to this character and make him playable.